The development of the de Havilland Vampire began in 1941, as an experimental aircraft. The intention was to exploit the revolutionary new jet propulsion. De Havilland had made studies that suggested that a single-engine, twin-boom design would be suitable. The Halford H-1 turbojet was selected as a power source. This engine would later be renamed the de Havilland Goblin. De Havilland had considered to design a high-speed jet bomber, but they were approached to develop a design for a high-speed jet fighter that could be used to defend the country against German jet bombers. The first design, the DH-99, was an all-metal, twin-boom, tricycle undercarriage aircraft armed with four cannons. The twin-boom enabled the aircraft to have a relatively short jet pipe, which was crucial to avoid power loss from the engine. The design of the DH-99 was soon modified to a combined wood and metal construction, and was renumbered the DH-100 in November 1941. Due to its unusual design, the DH-100 was considered an experimental aircraft. The Ministry of Aircraft Production expressed its doubts about the design, but in April 1942 the construction of two prototypes were approved. The DH-100 was primarily composed of plywood and aluminium. De Havilland had extensive experience in the use of molded plywood for aircraft construction, and had previously used the material for the de Havilland Mosquito. The first DH-100 prototype conducted its maiden flight on September 20, 1943. The tests revealed problems with directional instability, and led to a redesign of the tail of the aircraft. In May 1944, a production order for 120 Vampire Mark I was made. The order was quickly increased to 300 aircraft. But the first production Mark I did not fly until April 1945. Only about half a dozen production aircraft had been built by the end of the Second World War. De Havilland also developed a night fighter, the DH-113, as a private venture. The DH-113 was a two-seat design, and was intended for export to the Egyptian Air Force. When the British government put an embargo on arms supply to Egypt, the RAF took over the order for the DH-113. It was put into service as a temporary solution after the retirement of the de Havilland Mosquito. A jet trainer version was also developed, the DH-115 Vampire, which was designated the Vampire T-11 in the RAF. The high fuel consumption of the Goblin engine was a problem in the early Vampire models, as indeed it was in many of the early jet designs. Later versions of the Vampire Mark I used the Goblin II engine, and the Vampire F-3 and onwards used the Goblin III. By the mid-1950s there was also a Goblin Mark 35 export engine available. A number of vampires also tested the Rolls-Royce Nene engine. The vampire was quite maneuverable in the 400 to 500 miles per hour range. It has been claimed that the type was the last British jet-powered fighter capable of accurately precipitating conditions such as hammer stalls, stall turns, and wingovers. Vampire Mark I entered RAF service in 1946, in the interceptor role. The RAF then proceeded to replace wartime fighters stationed in Germany. In 1948, Vampire FB-5 was introduced in Europe, in the fighter-bomber role. The greatest number of FB-5s were stationed in Germany, but the version was also used in the Middle and Far East, as well as in reserve squadrons in the UK. Some RAF vampires saw combat in the Malayan emergency, during the late 1940s and early 1950s. A typical mission involved rocket and bomb attacks against insurgents in remote jungle areas. The tropical experiences led to the development of new models more suited for this climate. The Vampire FB-9 was introduced, replacing the older FB-5, and was deployed in the Middle East and Africa. In 1954 it was involved in attacks against insurgents in Kenya. The NF-10 version served from 1951 to 1954 and was flown both daytime and nighttime. By the end of the 1950s, the Vampire was phased out of RAF service. The Royal Navy used a navalized version of the Vampire FB-5. This version was given the name Sea Vampire, and had a V-shaped arrestor hook, enlarged air brakes and landing flaps, as well as a stronger construction so it could handle carrier landings and launches. The Vampire was exported to 12 countries, including Australia, Canada, India, and Sweden. It served in the Rhodesian Air Force until 1979. In total, 3,261 vampires were produced.